guys, experimental aquaponic system. This system is about 10,000 gallons. I designed it and we built it about a year and a half ago. Um, I've been using it to test out all different aspects of aquaponics, so come on in and have a look. You come on my. here is the fish tank. The fish are the primary driver of the aquaponic system and the fish food is the primary fertilizer. All natural farming relies on organic matter. The primary organic matter input into the aquaponic system is commercial fish food. So we feed the fish, fish digest the food, and then the fish waste goes on to be converted by the microbes to become the food for the plants. Here in the fish tank, we try to optimize conditions for the fish. We try to make the fish as happy as possible in their home, which is the fish tank. So what we got is, uh, this is a kiddie pool. This is an above ground swimming pool that I've converged for use as a fish tank because this is my experimental system and the above ground swimming pool is the most cost effective way I could find of holding this amount of water and also to make it deep enough that the fish are comfortable. The fish that we have in this system are both tilapia and koi. We raise tilapia to eat because they're quite tasty and we raise the koi because they're beautiful and people are uh, they're much higher value. People will pay a whole lot more money for a koi than they will for a tilapia. And they're both quite uh, resilient fish. They're strong and they handle being in the aquaponic system very well. So in order to optimize the health and conditions for the fish, there's a couple things you want to do. We have a roof over the fish tank here in order to keep the sunlight off of them. Because fish can get sunburnt and also if there's too much direct sun, then that will encourage algae growth in the fish tank. We don't want algae to be growing here, we want fish to be growing here. So we have a uh, cover here over the fish tank blocking them from uh, the most intense sunlight during the middle of the day. Also, the fish tank is circular and the water outflow is through the drain at the bottom of the middle of the fish tank. We, this results in a vortex, once again, a larger vortex here in the fish tank, and the idea is to prevent any anaerobic zones, any hypoxic zones, where uh, the water might not have as much oxygen or might have more fish waste. So the idea is to keep all the water in the fish tank as good as possible for the fish. So the fish like to have lots of oxygen and not too much fish waste. So there's a fairly high turnover here. The water coming into the fish tank from the vortex and then moving on to the biofilter. So this here is the biofilter. The water comes out of the fish tank and enters the biofilter here. This is an external standpipe and the elevation of this standpipe determines the water height in the fish tank. So as the water comes into the top of the fish tank, the overflow comes out the bottom and dumps here into the biofilter. The water splashes down here like a waterfall, once again using the kinetic energy of the water to create aeration. Because every cyst, all the biological components of the aquaponics like to have as much oxygen as possible. We're trying to get as much dissolved oxygen in the water as we can while minimizing the amount of electricity we use. The biofilter is here for the microbes. The microbes is what makes the whole aquaponic system function. They take the fish waste and convert it into a fertilizer that the plants can uptake. The biofilter are 55 gallon drums. It they're all plumbed in together through the bottom, so it's essentially one large distributed tank. The media that we have in here is two-thirds black cinder and one-thirds biochar. Biochar is biologically active charcoal. And the idea is that this has as much surface area as possible for the microbes to live in. We're trying to, with the, with the biofilter, we're trying to make essentially an apartment complex for the microbes so that the microbes have an optimal house to live in. So with the biochar and the black volcanic cinder, 
that provides uh, an, an ideal habitat for the microbes. The water level in the biofilter reciprocates, meaning that it floods and drains. And we accomplish that using the auto siphon over here. So come on and have a look. So the auto siphon here takes the water out of the biofilter into the grow beds. It also regulates the water height in the biofilter and results in the reciprocating action. As the water in the biofilter floods up to this level, it creates the siphon. And uh, once it gets this height, the water level drains down until it gets below the air break, which then um, breaks the siphon and results in the water level flooding the biofilter once again. So the water level in the biofilter is reciprocating. It's constantly flooding and draining. And it exits the biofilter here through the auto siphon into the grow beds. So the water exits the auto siphon into the grow beds. You see here that the flood stage is, uh, the, is the biofilter is flooding up to the top and right now it's starting to drain. So the auto siphon has started and now the water level in here drops down and sucks the biofilter down to the bottom of its drain phase. So the reciprocation the biofilter floods and drains. And the water now is coming out of the auto siphon into the grow beds. The grow beds is where the plants grow. And we try to optimize the conditions in the grow beds for plant growth. Hence, that's why we have a greenhouse. The greenhouse is, uh, allows us to provide shade during the summertime, keep some insects out, and also to keep the rain off of the crops. We get over 200 inches of rain a year in this location, and so keeping the rain off of the crops is kind of important or else uh, to prevent uh, molds and mildews and all that kind of stuff. So what we're looking at here is the cakey table. The cakey table, or the seedling germination table, is where we sprout our seedlings. We plant our seedlings in two inch net pots at high density, and once they sprout, then we transplant them out into the grow beds where they can mature to a harvestable stage. The cakey table is not part of the main system circulation. So whenever I want to water the seedlings, I can come here and open up this valve, and it drains water out of the fish tank and it dumps the water from the fish tank directly into the top of the seedling germination table here. So from the top of the seedling germination table, the water floods down, it passively waters all the seedlings from the bottom, and then the water dumps into grow bed number three. So it does return back to the system, and it never exits the system. However, as part of the main system circulation, the cakey table is dry for most of the day, and then normally once a day, we'll crack this open for a couple of minutes to water the seedlings. So what we're looking at here is the overflow system for our aquaponics. It's the end of our grow bed. This uh, aquaponic system has four grow bed troughs, it's deep water culture grow bed troughs uh, that are about a foot deep, four feet wide, and 50 feet long. The, I say about 12 inches deep because the grow bed doubles as the sump tank in this system, which means it's the bottom tank. So that when the amount, the water volume in the system, when it varies, all of the other tanks in the system stay at their proper height, but only the sump tank, which is the bottom tank in the system, uh, from a gravitational perspective, is uh, the one is the only one that's going to vary in height. So you can see right now the water level is a little bit below the top of the grow bed. That's totally fine. The reason it's doing that is because the grow bed here is the sump tank for the system. However, because the grow bed is the sump tank for the system, there's the possibility for it to overflow when there's too much water in the system. So what we've done is this right here is the overflow. So if we have too much water in the aquaponic system, instead of it overflowing anywhere else, it goes through the overflow standpipe 
out into our compost pile. And in the compost pile, we have uh, bananas and papayas and kabocha squash and pineapple and all kinds of goodness. Come on, take a look. So what we're looking at here is the compost pile. The uh, organic matter scraps that uh, don't go in the worm bin wind up going in the compost pile. Uh, so to differentiate, the soft stuff goes into the worms, and anything that's a little bit harder goes in here to the compost pile, which decomposes into uh, fantastic compost that can be used for all of the plantings and the gardens that we have that are actually in the soil here. Also, the overflow system from the aquaponics waters the compost pile. The only fertilizer this system has gotten in the last year and a half has been organic matter that we throw into the middle of the pile and also whenever the aquaponic system overflows all the microbes and the nutrients from the aquaponic uh, effluent wind up uh, going here into the compost pile. And as you can see the plants are fairly happy. We've been cranking out bananas and papayas and kabocha squash and pineapple and all kinds of goodness is thriving on this incredibly simple system. So once again the concept is nutrient recycling. Instead, so the waste stream from one step becomes the feedstock for the next step. So the waste waste in the aquaponic system isn't wasted. It winds up as fertilizer for the compost, which grows as bananas, and papayas, and squash, and pineapple, and all kinds of goodness for the kitchen. So the waste vegetable organic matter from the aquaponic system goes into the top of the worm bins here. So the stuff that we don't want to eat, we throw into the top. And the worms, actually the bacteria digest the plant matter and the worms eat the bacteria. And also the worms digest the process and the, the beneficial slime on the worms uh, helps to guide the microbial ecosystem into a beneficial direction. You wind up with the good microbes and the worms kill off the bad microbes. It's really an amazing thing. And so what you wind up with after a month or two is finished vermicompost. This here is black gold. Let me show you the texture of this stuff. I mean, this is, be anyone who's done any gardening, this is beautiful stuff to behold right here. This is the best quality material for planting that I know of. And if you buy it from the store, it's quite expensive. But to make it at home is essentially free. Ah, here you can see we got a little worm. You got lots of worms in here, but so in the finished vermicompost, we actually have adult worms and lots of egg casings. So that when this is used for anywhere you plant with this stuff, the eggs will hatch and all the beneficial worms will be uh, inoculated into whatever system that you plant with this uh, vermicompost, uh, also known as black gold when it comes to organic farming. So what we're looking at here is the pump closet for our aquaponic system. Uh, I'm a believer in the one pump philosophy for aquaponic system, meaning you can consolidate the entire system down to one water pump. And uh, everything else is uh, gravity fed, as you've seen throughout the rest of the system. So the water comes from the bottom of the system, uh, which is right next to the uh, overflow valve that we were, uh, the overflow standpipe that we were just looking at. The water comes from there, it gets piped underground here to the pump closet. So, in the pump closet, you can see we actually have three pumps. The one water pump and the two air pumps. This is my experimental system and as I've been talking about, I've been running a lot of different tests to try to come up with the most energetically efficient way to get oxygen into water. That's why I have both the half horsepower and the one horsepower air pump. These are Sweetwater air pumps. They are aquaculture commercial grade. They're designed to be run 24 seven for the aquaculture industry. It's kind of industry standard on how to get air into water is using these pumps right here. It's supposed to be the most efficient way to do it. But after a year and a half of testing, I've come up with a dramatically more efficient way to do it. I've turned off these air pumps completely now, and in doing so, I've eliminated two-thirds of the electrical requirement. So how have we been able to do that? 
We've been able to do that by using the water pump. This water pump is variable flow, it's, uh, which allows me to actually tune the system and adjust it to have more or less water flow coming through the pump. And also, it, uh, I do that by varying the amperage. I can turn down, uh, which corresponds directly to the amount of electrical power that the, the system consumes. So I, by turning down the flow, I also turn down the uh, electrical consumption. And the real trick is uh, that's allowed me to turn off the air pumps and keep them off is that the water goes from the water tank here through the vortex aeration system. So we're looking at here is the aeration system for the aquaponics. Uh, I have gone through three separate aeration systems trying to find the most energetically efficient way to get oxygen into water. All the components, all the living components of the aquaponics system, the fish, the microbes, and the plants, all like the most dissolved oxygen in the water possible. Finding the most energetically efficient way to get the oxygen into the water is very important uh, for anyone who is running a large aquaponics or aquaculture operation. Also, particularly for people that are in off-grid applications where you need to generate your own electricity to run the system. Out here in Hawaii, our electric rates are very, very expensive. We pay almost 50 cents a kilowatt hour, which is way more than most people pay, especially on the mainland of the United States. What we've done here enables me to turn the air pumps off. For the first year we were running the systems, the air pumps used two-thirds of the electricity, and the water pump used one-third of the electricity. Through the recent innovation, including this Vortex aerator, I've been allowed to turn the air pumps off completely, thereby eliminating two-thirds of the electric bill. This is very important, and I am surprised that this system is not currently being used in commercial aquaculture systems worldwide. It's a more energy efficient way of getting air into water than using an air pump.